that's what I call a throwback. Hey everybody, welcome to the first lightning round video of 2024. Now, before you click away, um, I know that the opening of this video probably does not match the title and thumbnail. And the reason why is because I don't know what I'm going to be talking about today. Yeah, we're doing things differently this time. Also, yeah, I'm wearing a hoodie and uh, you might hear a little extra room noise today. I apologize for that, but it is flipping cold right now. Um, it is uh, like 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That's this Celsius. And uh, I know, I know all you Northern people, this is where you all you climb in the comments and tell me what I was I am because I'm from the South. You know what? I don't want to hear it. Like you can just leave it. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. So in the past, lightning round videos were always asked by Patreon supporters and members at the uh, solar system level and up. And the problem is that I would take those questions and I would research them and it kind of became, instead of just doing a video on one topic, it became a video on multiple topics that I had to research and it became actually a lot more work. And I had to sort of pick and choose which topics I chose based off of which ones I had time to research. And I always felt like that was a little bit unfair because sometimes people would ask questions and they never would quite get answered. And of course, if you're supporting at that level, you should get your question answered. So what we're gonna do today is I'm going to live respond to the questions that I received from uh, my Patreon people. I have not seen these questions yet. I'm going to respond to them the best I can. Um, and here's how this is gonna play out. If I run into one of these questions and I can't answer it right here in front of you, what I'll do is I'll put that in a ballot box. And at the end of the video, any of those questions that I couldn't quite answer that wind up in the ballot box, you guys get to vote on which one of those topics I make a full video on. So this is gonna be off the cuff. I am not scripted. This is more like a TMI video. If you haven't checked out my TMI channel, um, I know I haven't posted much on there lately, but we're gonna be putting some more stuff out there in 2024. That's kind of part of the plan. Uh, so maybe you like this, maybe you don't. We'll see if this works. I know a lot of people like me a little bit more loosey goosey, a little bit less scripted. So um, I'm gonna be completely unscripted on this. <laughs> I'm winging it and uh, yeah, we'll see how it works. Roll that intro footage. All right, let's get to the first question. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little nervous about this. <laughs> All right, so the first question comes from Fishtail. It is, has having two first names, Joe and Scott, given you problems at busy restaurants or similar? Uh, at busy restaurants, it has never been a restaurant problem. Um, it's a funny thing because I grew up in a really small town and, um, you know, everybody knew my parents because they were both teachers. So there was never really any confusion. I never got called Scott when I was a kid. It was always Joe. And um, and then I went off to college and it was only after that, you know, and going into the professional world and everything that I started getting a lot of people calling me Scott. And it still happens a lot. Uh, it's something that, that cracks me up is that people will leave comments or, or email me and they'll refer to me as Scott, which cracks me up because my channel is Answers with Joe. <laughs> I know my channel name is Joe Scott, so it's it's in there and maybe that's what they're looking at. But uh, the, the, the name of the show is Answers with Joe. And it's like, how are you still calling me Scott? But yeah, um, I would say it happens at least once a week that somebody calls me Scott instead of Joe. I wouldn't call it a problem though. Also just a quick, uh, name thing that was funny when I first got to college was that uh, my parents listened to country music. I had very little uh, exposure to classic rock. We didn't listen to a whole lot of that. So I, I went to college and the first week in the dorm, I had all these people because my name was on the, the door or whatever. People kept coming up to me and asking where I was going with that gun in my hand. And it happened the first time and I was kind of like, oh, <laughs> you know, just kind of laugh along because I didn't, I didn't know what they were talking about. And then, and then it happened again. And I mean, it happened like three or four times in the first couple of days. It just kept happening. And I was like, what are you guys talking about? It was just the, like, why is everybody asking me this? And, and then somebody had to explain to me it was a, it was a Jimi Hendrix song. And I haven't really gotten a whole lot of that since then. I don't know why it was like the first week of college. I was just getting that question a lot, but I'd never heard that song before. And actually in the early days of this channel, uh, the original name of this show was Ask Joe. And then I changed it because there was already an Ask Joe out there and my channel was still really small, so I didn't, you know, want to mess with that. Uh, so for a while I did change it to Hey Joe, very briefly. Um, 
specifically because of the the song and everything. And then I landed on answers with Joe. Or maybe it's answers with Scott because I get called that all the time. All right, next question is for or from Donna Sawyer. Says, if you are in hold on, if you are intermittent fasting and need to take medicine during a fasting period, does it take you out of intermittent fasting? Uh, so she's asking me this, I think, because so Donna is one of the people that shows up in the in the Zoom calls that we do. Again, Patreon stuff. Uh, Patreon.com slash answers with Joe. If you want to go check it out and be a part of this. Uh, but uh, I think Donna and I have talked about this on, on Zoom calls before, but intermittent fasting. So yeah, I have done intermittent fasting quite a bit. Uh, I got really into it maybe five to seven years ago. I'm more intermittent about my intermittent fasting now. I don't, uh, I don't do it every single day, but uh, honestly, most of the time now, what you would refer to as intermittent fasting is really just I'm too busy to eat, so I don't wind up eating anything till later in the afternoon. But uh, so to answer that question, no, I, I mean, because unless you're drinking it with unless you're taking the pills with a soda or something like that, that has, uh, you know, carbohydrates and sugars and stuff like that. And if you're doing it with water, I don't think that counts. Now, I guess uh, a little addendum to that would be, you know, obviously there's some food or there's some there's some drugs that you need to have food in your stomach when you take them. And obviously that would uh, be a problem if you have to take it first thing in the morning and you wanted to fast until the afternoon and you needed to eat something that would be an issue. You, you might have to shift your your eating period earlier. You know, just in case people who don't know what intermittent fasting is, it basically means that you restrict the time that you eat to a certain window during your day. It's usually like a six to eight hour uh, window. And of course, the the more you shift or the, the tighter you keep that window, uh, the more the, the fasting is supposed to work. So yeah, if you have to take medicine with food and you have to take it in the morning per your doctor's instructions, you would you would want to like shift that window to the morning and maybe like not eat, eat in the evening. I think most people prefer to do the fasting in the morning uh, because you're already kind of fasting overnight. And that's what breakfast is. You're breaking your fast. But yeah, the thing that I liked about intermittent fasting is, uh, of course, there's wrong ways to do everything. If you're just eating pizza during that time period, I'm sure it's not good. But uh, it was just simple for me. You know, it's, you're not counting calories. You're not restricting what you're eating or anything. It's just you just don't eat for a while. And uh, for those who have never done it, uh, I, th I feel like I can talk a little bit intelligently about this because I've done it quite a bit. But um, in my experience, the first few days are the hardest, by far the hardest, because I would get headaches. Your body's just not used to it. You get really hungry for a couple of days, but you do eventually, for me anyway, it's, this is a case study of one, um, it gets better. Uh, your, your body produces a hormone called ghrelin that um, it's the hunger hormone. It's, it's what makes you feel hungry. It's your body's signal that it's, it's time to eat something. But um, what happens when you intermittent fast, when you like go really long periods without eating, is your body kind of stops producing it or stops recognizing it. You don't you don't feel hungry anymore. If if you do the intermittent fasting for more than a few days, your body kind of regulates the production of that hormone, and you just you just don't feel hungry. So the first couple of days really tough, and that's where most people struggle. It's like oh this is awful, I can't do this. I got headaches, I can't function, you know. Um, but if you give it a few days your body tends to regulate and you feel fine. And yeah, like I said, for me, it's just a lot simpler. It's it's not thinking so much about what you're eating. Obviously, you still want to eat healthy, um, but it's it's just a simple thing. And obviously, if you're a busy person, it, it just means that y you can just keep working <laughs> and and then eat when, uh, you know, later in the day. And uh, for the record, so um, if anybody follows Tim Heidecker, from uh, the Tim and Eric show. He's got a, a podcast and a YouTube thing now. He's gotten really slim lately. And I was kind of like, whoa, what's going on? And I looked it up and he he he, he says it's about intermittent fasting. He was doing intermittent fasting, so. Um, but it, again, it's not for everyone. Everybody's body is different. I encourage anyone to try it because I, I liked it. It worked for me, but uh, try it. Obviously, if you do anything extreme, talk to your doctor about it first. All right, next question is from Sai. Another somebody that shows up in my uh, Patreon Zooms. So I asked, if we discover anti-gravity for our air travel, will we still suffer from turbulence like we do today? <laughs> oh man, um, well, there's a lot of ifs there, huh? Okay, so I don't know 
maybe this maybe this goes in the ballot box but i would say i think this is a very theoretical question because obviously this is not something that we have i would bet that if we had the technology for anti-gravity that we wouldn't that we would have the ability in our computers in our you know anti-gravity airships or whatever airships <laughs> anti-gravity blimps uh whatever it is that we're traveling in i imagine that the computers would be able to adjust for that because we're still moving through air and we would be hitting pockets of air that would probably rock the ship and whatnot but if you had anti-gravity that could you know just kind of push the ship wherever it needs to be i imagine you'd be able to adjust for that i'm, I'm kind of thinking of the way that um you know the mirrors and big telescopes can adjust for atmospheric disturbances uh you know it's sort of a weird corollary that i'm thinking of in my head right now of course if we had anti-gravity we might not even need to move through the air you might just lift up out of the atmosphere go across wherever you need to go you could go as fast as you want and then just go back down and you could re-enter the atmosphere at whatever speed you want because you could just move things where you want it but to answer your question so yeah i would say i would say that if we're still flying through the air, you would still hit pockets of air that would rock the ship a little bit. But I, again, I imagine if our technology was so advanced that we had anti-gravity, we would have ways to account for that. And again, if you, if you had anti-gravity, why go through the air at all? You just lift up above it and then fly as fast as you want and then just lower yourself down. That's my, that's, that's my suspicion. By the way, I just want to say really quickly, if anybody in the comments is thinking that these are some softball questions, I'll be honest, I did kind of ask them to be a little bit more softball <laughs> since I don't have time to, to research them. Maybe in the future we could be a bit more technical and they might, you know, stump me a little bit. But I was like, please try not to stump me on these. Please give me something I can actually talk about. And for that, I say thank you to these guys. Now, I'm not, I got two more questions. We'll see if the others are nice to me. All right, next question from Mark Hoffman. Mark asks, the universe is estimated at 93 billion light years across, but do we know if we're closer to any one side over another? Or is it, or is it we really are at the center of the universe just like we act? Oh man, this is a great question. Um, <laughs> so my understanding, and it's just my understanding, is that since the universe kind of began as a singularity that expanded out in all directions, uh, every everything is at the center of the universe which is completely paradoxical and makes no sense but that is how i understand it to be true like how can everything be at the center of the universe at the same time that makes no sense that makes no logical you know sense in the in the way that we experience the world in like 3d space and whatnot but but the universe isn't necessarily 3d space some say it's like a saddle. So this kind of makes me think of a video I just saw. Um, I don't know how old this video will be by the time you guys see this video, but Veritasium did a video recently where he was kind of doing the man on the street interview kind of thing at a, at a college and he was wearing a little uh, poster board or whatever you call it, sandwich board, what, yeah. Uh, and he had people trying to uh, guess how, anyway, he was, he was testing how, what people knew about the size of different things in the universe. It was kind of funny. But um, one of the questions was he was asking them how many galaxies people think there are in the universe. And as I was watching it, I was, I was kind of stumped by that myself because I was like, can we really know exactly how many galaxies there are? Because my understanding is that, you know, we, we, we can only see so far before the stretching of space-time through dark energy uh, before an object gets so far away that because all of the space between here and there is getting bigger it's kind of like I've, I've had to use the um, the example of a, of a chessboard like if you have all the little squares in a chessboard on a line so to speak we have to throw an animation up here to explain this but uh, if every single chess square got a little bit bigger, then, you know, the, the square that's right next to the first square only moves over just a little bit. But the one at the very end of the line moves over quite a bit more because every single square in between has gotten a little bit bigger. So the space in between us and the furthest galaxies has, has grown so much and it's always growing so much that the furthest galaxies away are now moving away from us faster than the speed of light in relative terms. 
And if that's the case, then we'll never see them. The, the light from those galaxies will never reach us. So now that JWST is up there and it's finding some of the oldest known or the earliest galaxies, because the further you see out into space, the further you go back in time, um, it's seeing some of the furthest galaxies and oldest galaxies and earliest galaxies that we've ever seen. And I guess where I get a little bit tripped up is, does that mean that they really are the earliest galaxies? Because I'm hearing they're, you know, 500 million years old and that's like right after the Big Bang kind of thing. Galaxies were forming so much earlier than we thought they would, all that kind of stuff. I, I don't know that I don't know that we'll ever actually see the furthest galaxies because I think they are moving away from us faster than the speed of light. So their light will never actually reach us. And this gets really, I don't know, it gets kind of philosophical. Like is, is the universe finite? Is it infinite? Does it just keep going? Those furthest galaxies that are so far away that we can't even see their light, are they in the center of the universe too? And there's more on the other side of them that are maybe so far away that they can't see it because they're traveling further away faster than the speed of light. Um, it's, I don't know, it's kind of one of those questions we might not ever know. But you know what, I, I, think, I think this requires a bit more looking into and uh, philosophizing about than I can do right now. Let's, let's throw that in the ballot box, shall we? Okay, so we do have one more question, so stick around for that. But real quick, I wanna, I wanna talk about risk. So a little risk in life is a good thing. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, as they say. Unless the venturing that you're doing is, you know, requiring you to use a public Wi-Fi, in which case it's more like something ventured, something that can ruin your life. Because there's all kinds of nefarious data thieves out there that are unfortunately incredibly clever, and that's why it's good to have some protection, like you'll find with today's sponsor, NordVPN. So look, here's the deal. You either, you either use a VPN or you don't. And if you don't, I'm sure you've heard people harping on about it, and maybe you gave it not a whole lot of thought because you thought, you know, data theft has never happened to me, it can't be that big of a deal. Dude, it is. It is a very big deal. It's like jumping on a trampoline with a cactus growing under it. It's a lesson you only have to learn once. That sounds like a very specific example, Joe. Yeah, I grew up in Texas. What do you want me to say? The point is a service like NordVPN can protect you from all kinds of malarkey, from malware attacks to phishing to ransomware that can leave you eventually scrambling to prove your identity and ruin your credit, even drain your bank accounts. And it just does this in the background. It just runs on your computer and you can just go on with your life and not worry about it. And couldn't we all use a little less anxiety in our lives? By the way, it can make your life a lot more convenient too. Like, have you ever noticed that you only have trouble getting into your bank account at the worst possible time, like when you're traveling? Well, that's because the bank has to protect themselves too from all those scammers and data thieves. So if it sees you trying to log in from a different strange place, yeah, they make you jump through a thousand hoops just to get to your own money. Well, with NordVPN, you can be literally anywhere in the world and set your private network to be the same IP address as your home, so you just slide right into your account with no hassles at all, which is what you need when you're traveling, right? Or you could do the reverse, like maybe you're at home and you want to watch a movie on your favorite streaming service, but they don't carry it here. Well, then you can just switch your location to another region of the world and voila, you suddenly have secret access that you wouldn't otherwise have. Who's the incredibly clever one now? They also have dark web monitoring so it can help keep your information off of databases in the dark web. Really, the, the list goes on and on. So if you want to get started, just go to nordvpn.com slash Joe Scott, where you can get four months for free when you get a two year plan. And they also offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if it turns out you don't like it, you got nothing to lose. Actually, I take that back. You've got a lot to lose, but NordVPN can protect it. So one more time, that's nordvpn.com slash Joe Scott. You'll get four months free, all that protection, but most of all, you'll get peace of mind. And look, it's going to be a stressful year, guys. Get peace of mind where you can. Just click the link down below. All right, we got one more question. This one comes from John, who goes by right-handed neutrino. I didn't know that neutrinos had a hand preference, but there we go. John asked, do you think a full-budget Hollywood movie about the SCP Foundation would be a blockbuster or a flop? Fun. Uh, I can't believe that hasn't already happened, to be honest. I, I think it would be a blockbuster. Well, who knows what's, what's going to be a blockbuster anymore. But um, I think there's a big enough following, for sure. I'll be completely honest, I, I'm not I'm not completely well versed in the SCP lore, um, but I do find it really fun and interesting. I'm really honestly that my immediate reaction is I'm surprised this hasn't happened because it's it's just the it's just a, a big well of like I said, lore, characters, creatures. Um, it's it's this whole world that's already been built. And also I don't think anybody actually owns it it's sort of like an internet you know uh, collaborative internet thing 
Hollywood's in a really weird place right now. Um, I think we are starting to see superhero fatigue because it's just nothing but but Marvel and Spider-Man and all that kind of stuff. And um, that that's why like the, the 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 most successful films from this last year were uh, yes they were based on existing IP, being you know, like Barbie and Oppenheimer and that kind of thing. But they weren't you know they weren't like comic book movies you know they, they were they were based on a person's life and they were based on a, a a toy but it was still done in a in an interesting and unique way it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens with hollywood in the next five years or so because uh, i know that the you know the streamers came out everybody had their own streaming platform and they started creating all this content for it and then realized oh we're not really making back the money on this <laughs> that we used to because for a while there, like the mid-budget films just completely collapsed. Like you just did not see mid-budget films anymore. It was all either small indie films or it was giant blockbuster, you know, big IP Marvel type films. Which is something that I'm kind of, you know, I'm in the middle of right now is that there's there's all these people now that are creating things and not necessarily even one person, but like this SCP thing, it's like a whole bunch of people online that are sort of contributing to it that... Um, a lot of people are into there's there's a lot already there to play with but they've still been struggling to, to build that bridge between uh you know the the internet world and youtube and whatnot and the prestige world of, of hollywood and, and theatrical releases now i'm actually working with some people and i can't say too much about it but i'm working with some people that are trying to to, to bridge that gap um, and hopefully that'll benefit me. As many of you know, I have been writing screenplays since forever. I've got a few projects that I'm, I'm really trying to get uh, pushed through this year uh, to make some headway on it. And I think we've seen some interesting, I've seen some really weird trends in Hollywood movies this last year. It, I've actually been trying to focus on watching more movies. I've just spent so much time on YouTube for the last seven, eight years that I haven't been catching up on movies and whatnot. So I've been watching more movies recently and I'm struck by how weird they are. Like the biggest movies are all so weird. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but weird in a good way. I mean, just look at what won Best Picture in all the awards last year, uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's, it's one of the most bizarre mind F movies that you could possibly imagine. And it was a giant hit. A giant hit at a fairly small budget. And I think that's kind of how Hollywood films are trying to differentiate themselves from what you're seeing on the streamers and on, on like YouTube and, and online platforms, it's like, okay, well, um, we can't compete with quantity, so let's compete with weirdness. <laughs> let's like really separate ourselves and make ourselves very different from, from what you're seeing everywhere else. And if there's anything that's weird, it's the SCP Foundation. So I, again, I, I just can't believe this hasn't already happened and I would be shocked if there wasn't somebody already trying to do that. Now there's also something I've been thinking about doing. Um, Nothing is really in the works yet, but uh, I've been thinking about doing a video or a project of some kind around the uh, Mystery Flesh Pit. If you're not familiar with the whole Mystery Flesh Pit thing, you can feel free to Google it or whatever, but it's, it's this, uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a real thing. Unfortunately, some people have bought into it and think that it is real because people, there's always somebody that's willing to believe in stuff. But uh, it's the idea that somewhere out in West Texas is this Mystery Flesh Pit. And inside of it, it's like a it's like a giant living creature. It's like a Sarlacc pit from Star Wars, but much much bigger. And inside of it, are it's like its own little ecosystem. And there's all these like weird animals and stuff. And again, it's kind of like the SCP Foundation. People have just sort of added and added to this and created. It, what I find fun about it, it's almost like looking at um, uh, theorizing about alien creatures on other planets. Like looking at the the conditions of other planets and saying, okay, what kind of creatures could live there? Somebody like. People have started like looking at this idea of a, a massive living creature in the ground and all the ecosystem that exists inside of it. And it, there's some really, really clever stuff around it. So I've been thinking about doing a video where I you know travel to the mystery flesh pit, to the mystery flesh pit, and, uh, and examine all the creatures in it. Um, obviously, again, I have not put anything to paper yet on it, but I think that'd be, that'd be a fun project. But to give a solid answer to that question, I I don't know that it would be a blockbuster. I do think it would be successful, and I, I would not be surprised in the slightest if it actually happened. I would love to see it, actually. All right, so just to wrap this puppy up, it looks like the only question that really wound up in the ballot box was the one about 
where is the center of the universe. So I will just pitch that to you guys. Is that a video you would like to see? I can, I can see the thumbnail right now. Where is the center of the universe? Or are we at the center of the universe? If that's a video you'd like to see me do, uh, comment down below. And also, by the way, again, I just kind of was flying with by the seat of my pants maybe with anti-gravity. I don't know if I got turbulence or not, but uh, feel free to chime in in the comments if you agree, if you disagree, add some context. I'm sure there's stuff I'm not thinking of. Uh, I think it'll be a fun little conversation down below. And again, let me know what you think about this format. Um, I think we might try it a few times and if it just doesn't work, then you know, it doesn't work. I tried a thing, but uh, I think this could be a fun little addition to the channel. And uh, and again, I think it's more more equitable for the people who send the questions on Patreon. And by the way, if you want to get a question answered, 100%, if you sign up at the solar system level on Patreon and ask a question for the lightning round video, you'll get it answered right here. And again, if it doesn't, uh, if I don't have a good answer for it, it might turn out to be its, its own video. So there you go. Patreon.com slash answers with Joe. But again, thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Go check it out. I got the link down in the description. Uh, again, you, you've got enough to worry about this year. Take your online security off your plate. And I think that'll wrap it up for today. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're having a great week. And uh, this is me signing off. So uh, go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Stay safe. And I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.